Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Fallout Wasteland Warfare. We're up to episode 11 of season 4. There is two more episodes left in the season after this and we are starting to near the conclusion. And this time around we're not with New Hope. We're technically not with anyone this time. It's a bit interesting. The main focus today is going to be two raider factions fighting each other with a little bit of a, a third party and we'll be mostly focusing on that third party they're the one who has something to do here today but yeah it's going to be a bit of a, a different one because we're just seeing these two raider factions with beef having a conflict over you know territory or whatever it is we'll discuss that in a second so that means we're not doing any of the settlement mode stuff and we'll basically just have to jump into looking at who's taking part they're not on the table yet because i wanted to discuss who is in which faction so you can tell at a glance who is who so on that note we're just going to go straight to hearing what it is that's happening today and um, how a victory condition is going to be reached let's put it that way in advance i'll just mention i'm running on very very little sleep but i have to record this today because i have a very busy day planned tomorrow so if i sound a little tired or just a little out of it i apologize in advance it's just Bad run of luck that it happened on this day when I wanted to record this. Anyway, let's see what we're doing today. Quest 11. Quest name. Under cover of bullets. Quest overview. A group of raiders had started fighting with another group. It was hard to tell at a distance if it was armed farmers or traders with mercenary guards they were fighting. It might even have just been two rival raider factions having a disagreement. What mattered was that one group was part of Frank's ferals. Atom saw their faces through his binoculars and remembered them from the attack on his unit. Their faces were burned into his memory. He couldn't trust the children of Atom to this task. It had to be him. He had to capture one of those raiders alive, and then he would pry Frank's location from them, one way or another. So here are the two raider factions that are fighting today, and as you've heard, one of them has information about Frank. So one group of raiders, the group on the right of your screen here, that is some members of Frank's ferals. The ones on the left, they're just some other raider faction. Maybe they didn't kowtow to Frank's demands to join and now they're having beef. And by beef, I mean they're trying to kill each other until they are dead. So to keep things simple, at a glance, the kind of leather coat and power armor, or the T-45, and the one that looks like a vault dweller but it's been given raider armor, that is Frank's ferals. The one in power armor is equipped with a laser rifle, the rest are all equipped with bolt action pipe rifles. They're all using the scaver profile card, just for the record. And then this raider faction they're having beef with, these are more haphazard, uh, they're from the raider core box. Led by a veteran raider in raider power armor with an assault rifle, and then the three of these are using just the bog standard raider card and they're armed with pipe pistols and machetes. So comparable, the, uh, the scabbers have slightly more health, but more or less are the same. That raider is probably the strongest on the table just thanks to having that assault rifle. But Atom is here and Atom wants a word with specifically them. So Atom is kind of the rogue element who is our main focus for who we're following. So that's why it's gonna be a bit different this time, trying a different type of mission. So we're going to have to deploy everyone until I can show you what's going to happen. So we're going to do things in a bit of a different order here. Both these Raider factions are going to get set up and then I'll talk you through how Atom is winning today. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. So we're back with everybody on the table. This is where the Raider faction, I'm just going to refer to them as the Raiders, have appeared. They're the ones who want to remove Frank's ferals and Frank's ferals wants to kill them. So they're just entering red distance in from this table edge. Their goal is simply just kill all the other raider faction. Two of Frank's ferals are up the street there which we can just see at the top between the two buildings there. The third looks like he's just left that barricade and then the target of Atom is right at the back there behind that terrain kind of giving orders and may or may not move. We shall see. Adam himself is going to be obscured for the first turn, although he is technically visible over those radioactive barrels if it focuses on them. It's focusing on the building, unfortunately, down there. I know he can technically be seen over them, but we're pretending that he's crouched down, he's hiding. The radiation doesn't affect him, so he knows that's a safe entry point because the raiders won't go near the radioactive barrels. He will wait one turn, and then he will leap into the fray. His goal is to attack 
the leader of Frank's Ferals, and specifically, he either via ranged combat or close combat needs to break their power armor and then pass a strength test while adjacent to them, and that will be considered him subduing them and dragging them away. Granted, dragging someone away in power armor, whether it's a power armor frame or not, is an incredible feat, but he is not a normal man, and he has that strength, so he could drag that person away power armor and all, and that is his goal, sneak away with them. If he manages to do it quite quickly, we'll just play out to see which Raider faction wins, because I think that might be quite fun. But that is the main goal for Atom here, he wants to know where Frank's base is, and this is his chance to learn. So with that, let's jump into round one. As I say, Atom will not be activating this round, so it's purely down to, I'm just going to randomize between all the Raiders every turn, and just alternate, even though one side well, actually, they both have four, so yeah, we'll randomize to see who starts. So I rolled the 50-50 die to decide which raider faction would go first, and then amongst them also randomized. And it was the veteran raider in the raider power armor who was randomly selected. They moved up, and with a dual uh, assault rifles or akimbo assault rifles, it is going to do a long-range shot into the scaver of Frank's ferals on the left to the top of your screen. Not a great chance to hit a long range, just a black die thrown in. And it is on fours. Not a great chance, especially if you roll a nine. That would have been three damage, but it is a miss. Well, the scaver who was shot at was randomly selected for Frank's Ferals to activate, and he backed up a little bit, and I forgot how fantastic a chance to hit scavers have for whatever reason. I guess they're just an upper echelon of raiders, so that's why. They hit on sevens, so he's going to crack out that bolt action pipe rifle, long range with so just a blank die. Hitting on sevens, we're going to need to pull back to see the dice tray, and yeah, that's his target. I'm just going to shoot at her, and that is... He rolled a 9 as well. That's two 9s in a row. That's very weird. If that had been a hit on that, it would have been the literally same roll. Either way though, a miss. One of the other raiders activated and has just moved up twice since they only have range black on those pipe pistols they're equipped with. So they need to get closer to be in range and he's using the like fallen air duct there as cover. The other scaver at the top of the street, him right there, is activating. He's not going to get behind cover. He is just going to fire twice down the street into the veteran raider in power armor just to see if he can land a hit on sevens and it's still long range that is a fail with a quick action and they could do a prepare with that second shot is a hit bottle cap does nothing so it's just two damage in that raider power armor she is two plus one and she fully blocked it but he gets to do a prepare so he might be able to take a shot at whoever activates in a second Nope, he did not have line of sight of the raider who activated, who decided to go up the other side rather than run up the street where bullets are flying on both sides. So, double move, he is partially obscured by the corner of the building he's moved up against, so he'll probably have cover depending on the angle that he gets shot at by. So the former vault member turned scaver, moved up, and from that angle actually, because he is, like, the building sticking out here is only really... It's not even blocking his leg. It would be blocking his hand if his hand was lower. So he's not going to get cover from that angle, as it turns out. Only getting shot at once, and at close range this time, so it's not a black die. It's a yellow and a green. And it's on sevens with that. Oh, and there's the first crit fail of the game. Raiders cannot kill each other very effectively, as it turns out. The last of the Raiders activated, and again, that limited to only black. Well, it's like 12 inches, but still not close enough. So he had to move up and has done twice, also taking shelter behind the fallen air duct thing here. And that is it for the Raiders. It's over to Atom's target now, who is going to stay behind the barricade. Uh, I'll check if he has an angle to fire at anyone, but otherwise he is staying there until such time as he is engaged. Well, from where he is over there, there's a big rock in the way, so he can't shoot at the Raider that just got shot at. And there is no other targets yet, so he is just going to bite his time there. And we can see Adam to the bottom right of your screen. As we will go into round two, we're still doing event cards and whatnot, but when we go into round two, At Atom is going first and he is springing into action. He is going right for his target. He is single-minded focus on getting what he wants. So we'll just say in advance, if we draw any event card that is not applicable because we're just watching two Raider factions fight each other, we'll draw another one. Just just so we get something that actually like affects the battlefield potentially. Or it could be... AKA nothing, which I think this might be. Deathclaw prints in the area are obviously f fresh. The threat of its nearby makes it hard to concentrate. Each model may perform a maximum of one action that it that is use expertise during its activation. Well, no one's going to be doing that. Except, well, if Adam is able to one-shot the power armor, he would only have one action left anyway. 
to do the strength test, which is what this is applying to. Why is this not focusing? It's trying to focus on the street behind. It's very strange. There we go. Just if you want to read the text for yourself. So as we begin round two, just covered it. Atom is first to activate. He's using that super speed slash ability to jump really high to just instantly leap distance green past the barricade so he's got clear line of sight of his threat or target and he is going to try and blast away that power armor using a light burning in the darkness he thanks to one of his mutations can throw in an extra black dice so rather than just two black dice it is three as we've seen a couple of times in this season so far we'll just come to this angle here so we can see what gets rolled he's only getting the one shot this turn though and it's a crit fail well Sometimes your anger makes you do silly things, and there's an example of that. He just whiffed entirely. The raider that he shot at, or rather the Frank Sparrow he shot at now, will obviously engage him, and only him. They are now locked in combat, while their other raiders are just having their, their tiffle with each other. So it was Frank Sparrow's of the two raider factions to get to activate. Again, just rolling the 50-50 die. And the scaver to the top left is just going to take two shots, at this raider here who is in cover so it's harder to land the hit and it's also long range so just a black die and hopefully you can just about see if we fan down a little bit there we go first shot is a hit but it's only base damage oh what is his base armor because it's going to be boosted by being in cover so he's actually at three armor currently and he blocked all two damage but there's a second shot coming in it is a fail with a quick action so he'll also do a prepare and just hopefully find a use for it in a second so the raider on the right of the battlefield activated for the other side and successfully easily made a green charge distance on the raider card into close combat with that scaver there. It doesn't mean the scaver who's slightly out of sight on the left side of the building is going to be able to use that prepare from the first turn to take a shot into the combat. He can't kill him even if he lands up like a perfect hit. So we're just going to cover his combat first, his charge action. Randomize, he took a black charge die bonus and is armed with a machete. So here we go, and it's on fives, I think, and definitely not eights. Well, that is a swing and a miss. So then we'll just cover the overwatch shot from the prepare at short range, or close range rather, that is a green and a yellow. And it would be two less because he's doing a, a quick action, but plus two because he's shooting into combat, so it balances out still at a seven. And that is the first crit of the game, but is he hitting his intended target? One and three is his intended target. He is not hitting his intended target, he is hitting his own teammate. Excellent. So he has lost one armor, so he's got one armor left. He didn't block it, so he took two damage. Well, that's how it goes. Scavers have five health. Normal raiders have four. So his teammate accidentally shot him in the arm. Good job. Well, the leader of this Frank Farrell's unit is activating next and obviously it just took a... Well, a bullet missed him. It didn't actually even bounce off his armor. It flew past his ear. He turns and he sees Atom and is going to shoot that laser rifle at close range twice to try and get him. And he's using the scaver card as well. So it's still on seven. So he's got a good chance to land these hits, especially if you get a crit. Does the bottle cap do anything? I believe that's the one true damage. Yeah, one damage ignores armor. The rest doesn't. So that's three energy versus three armor. And he didn't block any of it and took four. That's not a good start for Adam. And last one, or second shot, I guess. That is a hit. What's the double bottle cap? That is set on fire and three damage, which he blocks one of. So in total, he took six and got set on fire. That's not a good start. He is pretty tanky, though, and he is going to heal two at the start of his activation. Back over this end of the table, this raider is shooting at the Frank Sparrow in the open twice, hitting on fours and double black dice, only one base damage though, and that is a miss, it would have been three damage. He's going to try again, and that is a success, and that is three damage versus two armor. Okay, blocks one, takes two, just like that, and with that quick action a normal raider can do a prepare, so he'll do that as well. He might even get the chance to use it. The Frank Sparrow over here who's now locked in combat is activating next and he's just going to use improvised weapon to strike the raider that locked him in combat since, you know, he doesn't have a melee option. So that's just a green die for improvised weapon and they hit on fours twice. An eight that comes down to a six is a miss. Second try 
is a six that comes down by nothing, so that is double miss. The veteran raider in raider power armor moved up, still not quite in short range of the assault rifle. The short range for the assault rifle for some reason is only red. So long range again, firing once since she moved. And that is a crit fail, good job. Oh, and upon finishing that movement up, the scabber at the top left there, he would use his prepare to then fire at her. So we're just gonna quickly do that. It would be still long range at that distance, but that is a hit, doesn't do anything on the bottle cap. So that is just two base damage versus two plus one super armor. Only the plus one, so she takes one damage to that Raider power armor, which isn't super sturdy from what I remember. Raider power armor has two health. And finally for Frank's Ferals, it's this scaver, the wounded one, who's also just gonna shoot into the veteran in power armor since she's in the open at short range this time. And an eight is not good enough, only just barely, because these guys are good at shooting. Next. That is a hit, it's just the two base damage versus two plus one. She only blocks one again and takes a second point of damage. So I think that is enough that her, yeah, her power armor breaks, it's only got two, so I don't need to put that damage down, we just need to flip the card on it. So now she's just getting a strength bonus from the armor. And weirdly, her base armor value is now higher than what the power armor is giving her. So I think in that instance, you would use the higher base power armor, uh, base armor value she has. But it is just one of those weird things. Oh, one more bullet coming in as a reaction over here. He might do something, so why not? He got a crit, so it does hit. It's only one damage though, versus two armor. And he doesn't block any of it, so the one damage goes through and leaves this scabber on two health remaining. That went better than I thought. And I think that might be everyone now. Oh, we know. He hasn't activated yet. Yeah, and in terms of rolling, this uh, raider right here is just going to try and kill the scabber that's in the open. Why not? He just needs to get two damage through. It's possible for a shot. He has a crit. That's one damage versus two armor. And he rolled a three, so one more damage goes through, leaving him on one health. So if this is a hit, never mind, it's not. So that takes us to the end of the net round now with that scabber one hit away from death. Well, it's not going super great for Atom and his chances of getting what he wants, but hey, let's see what happens in the next turn. Swarm of Flies. It's hard to keep a steady hand with the constant buzzing and biting. All lockpick skills are minus two. That's not going to be relevant here. So round three got started with Atom activating and he takes one damage from the burn. However, because of his healing factor, I'm just going to say that he cures status effects as soon as the heal kicks in. But he still took the one damage, so overall he's only actually healed one instead of two as I laid out when the season started. So he's at five damage, he has four health left. He has charged in to his target because that laser rifle is more of a threat outside of combat. And he's going to use improvised weapon because he has special rules for improvised weapon because he's using the burned man card. He gets two black dice and he does stuns on bottle caps. He's getting a black charge die bonus and he's throwing in a mutated black die from his special mutation powers. So I am, I'm actually one black die short. So we'll just need to re-roll one. And that is a hit. Uh, these two are blank, so I'll just re-roll one of those. So that is an extra bit of damage it hit, obviously. So that is... I never remember if Improvised Weapon is 2 base damage or 1, I'll need to go double check that in a second. The armour on this guy though is 2 plus 1 in that power armour. Oh and he didn't block any of it so I really do need to check because that's either 3 damage or 4 and if it's 4 he's broken the power armour in a 1 go. I'll need to go check, hang on. Well it turns out I was doubly wrong, Improvised Weapon is 1 base damage so it was only 3 damage that got through. However, T45 only gives you 3 extra health so he did actually break the power armor in that one really powerful pistol whip. Didn't get any bottle caps so no stun, that still means he's going to get hit back so there's, there's still a danger of him actually getting taken out. But that does mean in, in turn 4 he can just try and do those strength checks on his strength of... Normally it's only 4. Uh, I should have probably picked something other than that. I should have picked Endurance, which is 9, but I said Strength, so we'll have to go with Strength. He has two chances to pass that roll, and if he ever passes them, he's successfully subdued and taken his captive away from the battlefield. Back to the Raider on Raider Violence. In the meantime, randomly selected, the Raider faction, the non-Frank Ferals, were activated, and it's him specifically, so he's once again going to try and finish off that Scaver that has one health left. Can he do the job this time? Well, that's a hit for four damage, three damage, sorry. Oh, he can't fully block it, and mostly he can block two. 
he blocked one. So yeah, he did succeed. The scaver wiped off of the table. He has another action left. I think the other scaver, I'm going to stretch over the light again. Yep, is in range. He's in cover though, because he's partially obscured by the side of the building there. Well, that's the, almost a crit, but not quite. It landed on a five, which isn't good enough. So that, that one's a miss. Well, for Frank's Ferals, it was the riskiest of all act activations that was randomly selected. It is their leader in the power armor there, and rather than use improvised weapon to try and club at him, he's going to try and use that laser rifle in combat. So it's at a minus two, but his base chance to hit is so high, it's, it's still pretty good. So he's going to shoot that twice. Very close there. Very close. Because the 7 is down to 5. So he missed by 1. That one's a hit with the... That's one true damage going through there. With The star does nothing but the bottle cap is the one damage ignores armor. The rest goes on his armor though. Which is... I keep forgetting. It's 3. Oh! Wow! Okay, so only the one true damage gets through then. So the, he's still alive and kicking. So he's definitely going to get his two chances next turn. Another of the raiders activated the one who was hiding here. He came round the corner here to follow the veteran up. And now he has a clearer line of sight of the scabber at the top of the street. So just one shot. And he's going to give it a go. Wow, he actually hit. And he's doing three damage against two armor. He blocks one and takes two. It's back to the scabber who's locked in combat. He's actually going to try and use that rifle now that I've realized. Yeah, with, even with the minus, his chance to use it in close combat is still better than a one damage improvised weapon. So, sure, that's what he's going to do. Also, I'm fairly sure, did he actually, the, the raider he's fighting with, did he get a turn in turn two or did I forget? I really hope I remembered and he just missed. Oh, wait, no, he did two damage, right. Okay, never mind. So, the first hit is definitely going through because it's a crit and it breaks one armor. So, that is him down to two armor. No, one armor, sorry. He blocks none of it and... Two damage base on the bolt action pipe pistol, yep, so that is two damage through against this raider and Robin gets another swing or headbutt or whatever it is he's doing with the gun, oh that, that's a big miss that time though. The veteran raider moved up so she could finally fire that assault rifle point blank range so it's a green and black die to help her chances to land the hit. Only one shot this time though, that, oh, wow that is a hit and a half. Breaks one armor, two extra damage, that is four damage with one armor break so that brings the scabber's armor down to one. Okay, they did actually block one and took three, but that's enough that they're actually dead because they, they had two damage already. So this scabber has just been wiped off the table by an assault rifle at point blank range. Huh, without their leader in power armor giving them orders, Frank Sparrows are kind of falling apart here. So last activation of the round already now, thanks to some casualties, is the raider engaged in combat with the scabber. They're gonna swing that machete twice into them, hitting on a reasonable five. And that is a crit. So, and it came down by two, not that that matters. That is three, sorry, two damage because the machete is one base damage, which I keep forgetting. Two damage against two armor. Didn't block any of it and has two health remaining. Now, if they all get wiped out, that is a problem because the raiders will still keep on pushing up and uh, I was gonna say Frank. Atom does not want the person he's fighting to die he needs them alive so that will become a problem if Frank's Sparrows die too quickly second slash with the machete is also a hit for two damage against two armor doesn't block any of it and dies oh no well that is a massive problem that means that Atom needs to drag away that guy at the start of the next round or he's just going to get peppered by bull his target is going to get peppered by bullets but he's locked in combat so there's a good chance he'll get shot at too that is unfortunate frank sparrows did not live up to their reputation today well let's see what event is carrying us into the next round forest fire each model may perform a maximum of one action that is a movement action during its activity oh that may actually help oh wow Quick actions are not affected. Yeah, only being able to do one move in this next round might actually help a massive amount if he doesn't immediately pass that strength test he's doing. So yeah, that actually is a really helpful event, which is pretty rare. Well, as we begin round four, it really just comes down to this, doesn't it? Atom has healed two, so he's got four damage on him now. So he has five health left. Um, that one movement means that only two of the raiders could shoot into the combat and there is cover from them. 
uh, he starts to worry about the the Frank Sparrow he's locked in combat with shooting him at point blank range, of course. But if these both rolls fail, he still has one more turn after this to succeed. I feel so. Uh, it's two attempts on his strength. I said, I, but really, his his strength should be higher because I'm seeing he has a mutation that gives him super strength essentially right now. But didn't consider that, so gotta go with what I said. And that is a fail with a quick action, which doesn't apply for one of these checks. And the second one is a six. I think that fell off camera, but it is a six. So he has failed this round, and we'll have to try again next round, which is a shame. And we're actually sticking over here because the last standing member of Frank's Ferals is the one who's activating. I keep on randomizing which Raider faction activates first. It's him. He's the sole survivor. He's swinging into, well, he's firing his gun at point blank range, rather, he's not swinging into him, he's shooting. And that is a swing and a miss, which is just as well, because that would have been a ton of damage. Would be four. Second shot. That's a crit, that's through. The star does nothing, it's one extra damage, so that's three energy damage versus three energy armor. Oh, he doesn't block any of it, takes three. He's still alive, five, six, seven. He's alive on two. So in order to expedite the process, and given that everyone can only move once, I've moved all the raiders simultaneously, and then we're just handling the two that can shoot into the combat. He obviously can't. He, he did one small movement to climb over this. The other one just moved up. He can't see anyone. Uh, you can just about make out the raider in power armor. She can, so she'll be firing at long range. And if we come over here, we can see the other one has also moved up a single time, and he has a chance to fire over that barricade into the combat as well. So those are the two shots that we're going to be handling. And if we just let me grab the dice, let's handle the bog standard raider shooting once. Now they're in cover, but he's shooting into combat, so those kind of balance each other out just to what they're normally rolling, which in the raider's case is on a four. They're aiming for the raider, just to be clear. Well, that would have been four damage, so just as well it missed, I guess. And then long range for the assault rifle is just a single black die. Yes, it is. So she's shooting into the combat once. And I think that's a hit for her, is it? Um, no, I keep forgetting she has such a terrible chance to hit. Even plus two, it puts her up to a six, but then she loses two for... Oh, no, she, yeah, she loses two for the cover, yeah. So, yeah, that is also a miss. So, that's the end of the round already. And what is taking us into the final turn of the game, even though it's basically just going to come down to two rolls of the skill die. Static build-up. All hacking skills are a minus two penalty. Raiders are not particularly known for their hacking capabilities, so that will not be an issue. Well, as the surviving raiders are bearing down on what's left of the Frank Farrell's squad, they're hearing a commotion going on behind that big barrier, and it comes down to two skill rolls. Uh, I, I'm going to move the camera. Hopefully that was on camera, but I'm going to move it. It actually did land on a crit. So, I'm, in my head, Adam like knocks the power armor helmet off and then just clubs him with the side of his pistol, knocking him unconscious and then making use of it, that super agility and strength to whisk away his captive to get the information he requires. In the meantime, all the raiders get to the banister or barrier, I mean, and discover that there's been signs of a commotion, but there is no one left alive. And that is going to do it for another Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Two more left to go, as I said at the top of the video. And with that, Atom has the information he desires. He tortures it out of the person he took, and now he knows where Frank's base is, which I guess you could look at as a good thing, but also potentially a bad thing. Feel free to discuss it in the comments if you wish. I think this might have been a little bit of a shorter one, just due to the nature of the objective today. Although it came down to the wire, Adam is taking more of a beating than I expected him to. His, considering how many dice he's rolling for his attacks, he has a nasty habit of missing which isn't helping matters. But either way, I hope you enjoyed. Please do remember to show your support. You can do that in three ways, just by like liking the video, commenting, or subscribing. Or if you can spare it, I would greatly appreciate it if you became a channel member. You get access to new episodes of this series a day early, and certain other series a whole week early, just as my way of saying thank you. You could also press the thanks button on that note, or check out the channel sponsor if you go via my affiliate link and pick up something for yourself. If you went through that link, I get compensated as well, so we both get something. Thank you either way, and I will see you in a week for the penultimate episode of the season. Until then, ta-ta for now.